Hi students, hope you are all doing well at home. Actually, we began with uh, structuralism, a brief introduction to structuralism, but we could not finish because of uh, the closure of the hostels and uh, class offline classes all of a sudden. So let us continue with that uh, topic. So before I go to uh, structuralism as such, because many of were uh, absent on that day, I just want to uh, give a brief introduction to the development of uh, different theories in the uh, 20th century, in the beginning of the 20th century or to the middle of the 20th century. So let us uh, see a brief introduction to what was theory and uh, uh, what forced this, um, uh, these many theories to come into existence, etc. Uh, we will see. So before I actually start, uh, let me uh, start my, uh, you know, share my screen. Yeah, hope uh, with my PPT is visible to you. Um, so, see, actually, mm, I said I will be beginning with some uh, introduction before we start the original uh, concept of structuralism. In your third semester also, we have been uh, uh, through some uh, theory, for example, uh, tradition and the individual talent, uh, that is by T.S. Eliot, which is a very representative essay of uh, new criticism. Okay, or uh, uh, of course, uh, though it is not uh, actually called as a new criticism, it, the seeds of new criticism, as I have explained to you, are found in Eliot's uh, essay itself. So new criticism is a school of criticism which was very uh, popular uh, during the, the early decades of the 20th century. Okay, and uh, also it has laid uh, foundation, you know, seeds for uh, the development of new criticism, school of criticism in America and uh, practical uh, criticism uh, in England, we, both of which were focusing more on uh, what you call the close reading of the text. So if we see uh, the uh, scene of uh, the literary critical theories uh, in the 20th century, uh, as uh, the slide is showing, in the later half of the 20th century, there was a surge in different literary critical theories. So if you see the history of uh, uh, literary uh, critical theories, uh, you you will observe that from 1950 onwards, there were many, many theories that were coming into um, uh, the uh, focus because of uh, many, uh, you, you know, what you call uh, many reasons. The reasons might be, uh, as I have um, already told, uh, that in the beginning of 20th century itself, there was a need uh, on part of the uh, literary uh, scholars or literary critics or literary historians to establish the scientific nature of, um, you know, studying literature and or establishing the literary uh, theory or criticism, etc. So, uh, in fact, uh, uh, the critics that we have read uh, actually like, um, uh, say, Eliot and others uh, have tried that only. So they have given, uh, as Eliot gives that example of um, how, uh, you know, um, the chamber that is filled with uh, two gases, okay, uh, where the poet's mind is like the uh, fine, um, um, what do you say, um, uh, one like a fine uh, um, piece of you know, platinum, which though enters into the chamber that is filled with gases will not change, but the result will be something else, you know, which he took uh, to show that uh, the poets should have some individual talent at the same time should have uh, focus on the tradition through which, you know, they take uh, much, uh, you know, and they also 
uh, try to uh, develop their many may their stories or their writings based on the a uh, tradition of a particular nation which iliad refers to as the european tradition etc i uh, at this uh, when uh, there was on one side there was the urge to develop uh, critical theories and to give a scientific basis for literary criticism or the study of uh, literature etc on the other side there was some resistance also if you see so they, this uh, this was also much prevalent because without mentioning any theory we have criticism that is what you have to uh, you know um, try to uh, understand see uh, we you read uh, samuel johnson who wrote uh, uh, about shakespeare and his plays or his demerits or merits etc uh, that is just preface to shakespeare where uh, of course johnson will not mention any theory but that is uh, uh, actually a a particular text or a particular writer or a particular author is taken and uh, um, it is tried to evaluate his works to bring out uh, the merits and the demerits etc if we are taking any particular theory or uh, any particular author or any particular work it comes under literary criticism and if we are giving any general principles okay a uh, general principles it comes under theory okay and we have read aristotle also and uh, aristotle of course also ha ha with uh, the example of so many dramas that were prevalent in his time has tried to give us so many general principles of literary um, uh, you know theory which uh, though not titled or though not called as literary um, theory exactly have many words you know many uh, contributions as we have seen that plot uh, which is the mythos etc or the, the catharsis and uh, um, uh, many other concepts that were uh, dealt by aristotle as we have seen so the whole uh, 20th century is very uh, what you say uh, is very uh, very much uh, you know vibrant uh, with different critical theories uh, propounded by many uh, different uh, um, Uh, critical theoreticians will see so in if you see the scenario in the 20th century in the 20th century the word theory has acquired uh, especially three meanings first one it alludes to the scientific ambition to master and define a conceptual field this is what i i have just told you okay so it alludes to the scientific ambition to master and define a conceptual field see at uh, the study of literature you know people wanted to establish a scientific uh, basis for that so theory was used to uh, refer to this scientific ambition to master and to define a conceptual field so it was the uh, it was the ambition of many uh, critics like uh, say iliad as i told you he uses uh, a scientific analogy in his essay tradition and the individual talent which we have already discussed uh, or you have already learned it in uh, the third semester so this uh, Uh, in the 20th century the meaning that is attached with this word theory uh, firstly is this scientific ambition so what is the next let us see it is used to refer to those critical discourses which aim to disrupt such mastery truth seeking and a systematic closure paradoxically they sometimes adopt a radically anti theoretical uh, stance actually during the 20th century in the name of the theory they used to refer to those critical discourses which aim to disrupt such mastery truth seeking and systematic closure you know as i told you before the use of the word theory or uh, uh, before the word theory is very popular we have theory before theory which i told you that that, that is liberal humanism so though there was criticism there was no theory so there were critical discourses 
and uh, which try to give some um, truths and give some justifications for the writings of uh, so and so etc okay and uh, they wanted to in the 20th century they wanted to bring out uh, um, or uh, disrupt these uh, mastery and truth seeking tendencies of this uh, you know uh, criticism as such though they were trying to develop a theory uh, sometimes they were anti theoretical also and then thirdly to connote a poetics or aesthetics concerned not with the interpretation of text but with the theorizing discourse in general see you can recollect my words which i have just told you uh, that um, previously as i have taken the example of samuel johnson uh, samuel johnson no doubt is a critic but he has no theory he was referring to the texts of Sam shakespeare the great dramatist as we all know so this uh, theory of course sometimes used in the 20th century uh, as uh, you know uh, poetics or aesthetics concerned not with the, the interpretation of any text as it happened in the case of samuel johnson but with theorizing discourse in general so that is what i told you even before i came to this point in the 20th century there was a Mm, fascination or there was um, you know longing for among all the critics to establish uh, uh, the uh, scientific basis for literary studies and also uh, to develop uh, a general aesthetics of uh, literature you know aesthetics of literature uh, which is not concerned with any poet or uh, author but or any text even uh, you know uh, they aim to uh, develop a kind of theory in general or a discourse in general which will be applied to any uh, poet or any writer or any text so um, actually this third meaning was very offensive to traditional critics which i told you theory before theory which is called as liberal humanism you know we are speaking of theory only from say 1980s or 1990s especially in indian universities whereas in the foreign universities or european universities it was there from 1950s and 60s so uh, till then we were following the traditional critics that is liberal humanists though they evaluate a text of literature and though they keep on uh, um evaluating the merits demerits or uh, talking about the form of uh, a poem or a drama or a novel etc uh, they never have any theory as such and they need, they never gave any, gave any uh, name theoretical names as such so this is in the um, later half of the 20th century only that uh, uh, the theory came but in this later half of the 20th century we see that whatever theoretical discourse that we are uh, trying to learn or uh, trying to you know go through is not specific to only literature or literary discipline but the in the previous days in the traditional critics that is liberal humanism that is uh, very much confined the boundaries are confined to only literary disciplines but the modern theory of course has uh, uh, you know overarched the different disciplines or it has many um, uh, disciplines not only literature so uh, the advent you know of uh, critical theory with much fervor in the post war period you know i hope you know what is post war period that is world war 1 and world war 2 and world war 2 especially you know this theory has come into existence involving many con uh, complex disciplines like linguistics literary criticism psycho you know psychology psychoanalytical criticism uh, structuralism which is uh, uh you know which we will be discussing uh, shortly uh, which is based upon linguistics and then post structuralism etc so these uh, actually 
the theory which uh, 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 is uh, actually uh, you know involving so many disciplines uh, was uh, was hostile to the liberal consensus you know prevailing in criticism between 1930s and 50s so uh, theory in before uh, 1950s it was not a uh, similar to the theory that was coming out uh, after 1950s so among these overarching discourses the most controversial were the two intellectual movements uh, called as structuralism and post structuralism and uh, they uh, have their origin in france in 1950s and the impact of which created a crisis in english studies in the late 90 uh, 70s and early 1980s so uh, what happened with the advent of uh, uh, these theories language and philosophy are the major concerns of these two approaches rather than history or author see this is the more major shift that as students of literature um, should note you know we as students of literature should note you know because we are going to um, read what is an author and um, death of the author etc these uh, uh, names will be sounding very strange to you yet uh, you know what is an author you might be thinking it's very very easy to say what is an author uh, but uh, it's very difficult as we'll be reading in uh, my uh, michel uh, michel foucault's essay and also the death of the other as roland bath says okay so uh, the development of uh, this theory actually uh, has he is focusing more on language as a structure and uh, the philosophy of language and uh, but rather than the history and uh, the author so this is where uh the theory before 1950s and the theory after 1950s was uh, very much varying so we should uh, learn that okay and uh, we could see that there was a dominance of a continental european philosophy and poetics over the positivist and the empirical traditions of british thought okay um and this has marked a major break in criticism it's a, it's a sort of geological uh, shift it is considered in the um uh, you know in the history of uh, uh, critical uh, literary critical theory so we are associated with uh, uh, these words like uh, feeling intuition life tradition organic unity sensibility etc uh, you of course uh, the word organic unity is very familiar uh, to you because uh, we have seen how aristotle says that a plot should have organic unity so this uh, we have dwelt uh, very vividly and very clearly in the lectures that i have given you in the third semester and also we have seen tradition you know what is the tradition and how eliot defines it and also um how you know eurocentric tradition or whatever it is the tradition uh, was the very important term in literary criticism uh, previously you know before 1950s and also as i told you the four kinds of meaning like uh, um you know which i a richards uh, um has given is having this uh, uh, tone feeling uh you know intention etc and also we have sensibility if you go to the romantic uh, period uh, and what is poetry or what is the language of poetry etc you have the sensibility so uh, in in we, you know till 1950s we are very much aware of these words like tradition organic unity feeling uh, sensibility uh, etc and uh, but now they are no longer the dominant terms of critical discourse so um now the present theory is not using these words and a dominant humanistic discourse has begun to give way to the languages of formalism structuralism and phenomenology so formalism form 
is you know within that ism itself you have this what is it it is dealing with form in another words uh, it is like uh, the new criticism or practic practical criticism only but it is a bit different it is focusing more on the form of the text you know not uh, like uh, the text in fact uh, um, the principles of formalism and structuralism to certain extent sound identical as a structure and form uh, can be taken as one and the same though uh, and so that is why um, uh, critics you know feel that the seeds of structuralism can be seen in the russian formalism this is uh, the continental uh, you know in russia it was very popular the formalism and also uh, phenomena studying the phenomena okay so the new theoretical modes sometimes preserve humanistic perspectives also you know the new theory that has developed um, of course has preserved the humanistic perspectives uh, also so um, with this uh, brief uh, introduction i am coming to the uh, concept that is structuralism which is prescribed in your background study so what is structuralism what is a structure in general you know uh, you you all know what a structure is because uh, we talk of the structure of a building or the structure of a, a palace or a house or a, a structure uh, to simplify is everywhere okay um, the human structure as such and also um, the organizational structures etc we speak uh, of this word in a very general sense but uh, the the structuralism as such you know uh, it is also speaking of uh, structure though uh, the structure which is not visible though we are always living with it and we are always using it okay so let us see what uh, it is exactly structuralism in a broader sense is a way of perceiving the world in terms of structures so in this world in the broader sense uh, our understanding of different things in terms of structures is what is called as structuralism so this as a anism structuralism uh, is seen in the works of the anthropologist claude levi strauss see here uh, as i told you that the modern theory okay the post modern theory or modern whatever it is the post modern theory uh, was into so many disciplines and actually the foundations of structuralism we are founding in uh, in uh, anthropology uh, will be you will be wondering what uh, we the students of literature have have to do with anthropology as such you know claude levi strauss is one of the popular anthropologist who did uh, um, you know um, research uh, regarding uh, the nature culture uh, binary in uh, an armchair um, model of uh, doing research and uh, he was studying this uh, the structure you know nature as a structure and culture as a structure and of course what went in his research etc that is a different story i am not going into that now but um, the structures you know um, or the roots of structuralism can be seen in the works of uh, claude levi strauss and also the literary critic roland barthes so barthes actually as i have already referred is the one who declared that the poet is dead the art death of the author okay so for him author is also a structure okay and when we come to that essay that is uh, the death of the author we will discuss now the essence of structuralism is the belief that things cannot be understood in isolation so what structuralism says what is the principle of structuralism the principle of structuralism is that we cannot understand things or words in isolation uh, they because they are a part of a structure you know you take this don't uh, think that structure in 
our structures are away from us actually while living in a family we are living in a structure okay so we have to simplify this uh, word structure which is like uh, uh, an omnipresent thing because uh, starting from your <coughs> family from the very beginning the family is a structure okay uh, and uh, to define the relationships the word the words of relationship etc you need the structure of the family okay so that is the basic belief of the structuralism and uh, they have to be seen in the context of larger structures they are part of you know a families a group of families um, which you which uh, form communities and the many groups of communities which which form a society and many societies forming uh, like a mandal or a district or a state or a nation like that uh, you know we have to uh, see um, and understand things in the larger context of the structures in which they are part of so the context of larger structures do not exist by themselves but are formed by our way of perceiving the world so we'll get a doubt how these structures were formed so this is what these structures in in turn are not existing by themselves but are formed by our way of perceiving the world as you say um if you are a student of uh, history or um, political science etc hcp group with economics or not uh, even with english you might you uh, might uh, have learned or heard about hobbes the theory of social contract uh, theory where he says that uh, um, human beings have entered into a contract and so maybe to form um, the structure which we now call as a society or a family so the structuralism basically is studying uh, the structures and uh, to understand that whatever things we are studying or whatever ideas we are studying whatever concepts that we are studying they are um you know a part of some structures and in order to understand them we have to study them not excluding the structure but including the structure okay now with this let us see what else the structuralism says you know in structuralist criticism consequently there is a constant movement away from the interpretation of the individual literary work towards understanding the larger structures which contain them okay um structuralism actually as i told you is having um, its origins in anthropology okay then how is it applied to literature so if we are doing a structuralist criticism we have to take um, the individual literary work and uh, if we are interpreting that actually we won't go very near to the work but we will be moving towards the structure of that work okay uh, i am here giving the example of uh, the take for example we are analyzing um, john dans poem good morrow okay so if we want to analyze this poem good morrow um from the perspective of structuralism it demands more focus on the relevant genre to which this poem belongs which is called as alba or dawn song or which uh, of course deals with the concept of courtly love etc so when we approach this poem from a structuralist point of view will be focusing more upon the structure of this poem which is uh, in other words alba so rather than close reading the formal elements of that particular text that is good morrow or the poem formal elements mean what is the rhythm rhyme what is its form etc uh, and the language or images or symbols etc will be more 
reading uh, you know we'll be reading more about its uh, um what you say structure which is uh, which actually uh, the poem is a part of what so this is the uh, tradition of the dawn song all okay etc so we have to focus on the genesis of this uh, dawn song etc which uh, very evidently will make us to uh, move away from uh, this um, uh, text in front of us the text of the poem that is in front of us so this is how a structuralist approach uh, of a piece of literature will lead us you know you might be getting a doubt uh, uh, so what is the use whether it is right or not uh, wrong etc uh, i told you in the very beginning though there are many theories there is nothing like a wrong theory or right theory theories are theories they are there and uh, we as students of literature have to learn all the theories uh, all their um, uh, concepts and uh, uh, we have to learn a theory like it uh, like it you know some may be fascinated by some and others may be fascinated by others but uh, there is nothing wrong in uh, uh, having uh, a soft corner for such and such a theory etc so students please don't nurture this idea of uh, what is a good theory what is a bad theory as such uh, as i used to tell you in my previous colleges also if we go through these uh, uh, theoretical frameworks we will understand that good and bad the definitions for these words are not uh, universal and they are not static also so let us not uh, uh, nurture any such ideas of uh, this is bad or that is bad, good etc but a theory is theory for us so uh, if you take the evaluation of a piece of literature uh, from the structuralist point of view as i have been telling you they, this may take away from the text in front of you and it you will be focusing more on the structural patterns of uh, uh, that particular text that's what happens with the analysis of uh, the structuralist uh, uh, point of view so now uh, let us see what are the beliefs of um, structuralism as such so the fundamental belief of structuralism is that all human activities are constructed and not natural or essential so whatever we are doing now all human activities um, they are constructed and not natural or essential this is very uh, interesting and also this leads to much debate also see actually as students of literature here we are going to focus on um, the lang linguistic aspect only um, but um, the statement you know the, the belief of state uh, structuralism that all human activities are constructed and natural or essential actually these uh, have given um the basis for different development of you know uh, programs of gender sensitization or uh, uh, the feminist discourse or marxist discourses etc but uh, let us not go into other ways no, no let us see that this is the belief of structuralism so all human activities structuralism believes are constructed and not natural or essential so uh, preferring for scientific categorization structuralism suggests the interrelationship between units so of course structuralism uh, structuralists also they prefer scientific categorization and uh, they suggest the interrelationship between units you know the units they are surface phenomena which are visible to us and uh, rules here um, uh, you know the rules are the the uh, the ways in which units can be put together. For instance, let us take the language. Units are words, and rules are the forms of grammar which order words. Not only grammar, but uh, um, see um, because you know alphabet. Okay, English alphabet. If you 
uh, try to put the um, alphabet in a certain order only you will get a certain word take for example the word cat okay c a t so if we are actually putting c a t in an order of course is giving us a meaningful uh, unit which is of course the word okay and uh, if you want to say uh, a t c of course if you put a c t it is act but a t c you don't have any uh, what you say uh, constructed meaning in our language in the english language for uh, example and in the similar manner words are also uh, having a particular order in grammar say for example subject verb object this is the rule for uh, english uh, uh, sentence construction subject verb object so here words uh, to so that uh, um to have a meaning we have a partic a certain order you know uh, to put the alphabet in in to put uh, um alphabets in a sequence we'll get some words and putting words in a sequence we'll get some sentences and putting some sentences in a sequence of course we'll get uh, um you know complex sentences or paragraphs or essays etc that is what so uh, actually they structuralism suggests the inter relationship between the units and uh, of course uh, they believe that this inter relationship is constructed it is not natural or essential okay um so this focuses uh, as uh, you know on the language origin theories also so the language origin theories we have many as uh, foo foo theory being uh, you know ding dong theory or uh, um, uh, anamotopic theory some other theories you know which they they say but uh, structuralism believes that um it has gradually developed or constructed as a structure language is constructed so this is the beliefs uh, or beliefs of uh, um structuralism and then uh they structuralists believe that the underlying structures which organize rules and units into meaningful systems are generated by the human mind itself and not by sense perception so they are developed by our human mind but not the sense perception structuralism tries to reduce the complexity of human experiences to certain underlying structures which are universal so uh, structuralists always tries to reduce the complexity of human experiences uh, they you know putting them to certain underlying structures which are universal take for example language is uh, a structure universally it is a structure an idea which has its roots in the um, classes it's like aristotle of course aristotle also has the same idea who identified simple structures as forming the basis of life okay um, as aristotle of course is not only in literature he is also the father of many sciences as you all know he is not only a philosopher and um, a literary critic for us but he is a father of uh, many sciences who came up with this idea of simple structures uh, as forming the basis of life uh, life as such in on the earth okay a structure can be defined as any conceptual system that has three properties so aristotle says that uh, what is a structure how can we define he defined it uh, you know if um, Now uh, something is having uh, three properties. We can call it a structure. What is it? One is the wholeness. The system should function as a whole. Second one is transformation. That is, system should not be static. And self-regulation. That is, the basic structure should not be changed. So, if you uh, observe this. actually uh, it uh, applies to the language as a structure also this is what uh, uh, structuralists believe and the structure should have so for us uh, the origin of structuralism uh, in uh, actually uh, literature or um, language or uh, etc uh, we say um, we actually go back to 
the uh, one important uh, Swiss, you know, Swedish uh, linguist, um, Ferdinand de Saussure. Okay, Saussure course in general linguistics is a book uh, which was uh, published in 1916, where uh, he actually um, has given an important shift in the study of uh, linguistics, uh, uh, where uh, he came up with, um, um, you know, um, sociolinguistics. Okay, sociolinguistics, and uh, he actually moved away from the diachronic study of linguistics and then focused more on the synchronic study of uh, uh, linguistics or language, which is uh, studying uh, uh, the structures um, uh, or uh, functions of language at a particular time, rather than focusing on uh, the theories of origin of language, etc. Sashore uh, actually focused on uh, the structures and patterns of a given uh, language at a particular time, okay, which is like synchronic study. Okay, Sergio's idea of the linguistic sign is a seminal concept in all structuralist and post-structuralist discourses. So, uh, Sergio is considered as uh, uh, the key figure behind the development of the structuralist ideas that are there in structuralism as a theory and as well as post-structuralism in a theory. So, according to him, language is not a naming process by which things get associated with a word or name. So, simply language for us, you know, we understand language just as a naming process. But Sashore says that it is not like that. So, what is it that he says? He says, the linguistic sign is made of the union of signifier, that is, the sound image you know like um, if when i say cat okay the sound and when you listen you will get a image uh, uh, you know uh, the psychological imprint of the sound that is the signifier okay and the linguistic sign you know as i told you all alphabet can be considered as a, the sign you know are the signs only linguistic this is a different matter there are dif this different area because uh, some other uh, scientists uh, or um, you know linguists have uh, divided signs into different uh, uh, types which we can discuss later but uh, as far as uh, this structuralism in literature is concerned Sajur says that the linguistic sign is made of the union of signifier and uh, the signified let me uh, shift the slide where i have given this so you now it is visible to you sign is equal to signifier and signifier so Sajur speaks of linguistic sign and uh, also he says that the sign is a combination of signifier. So, for example, cat, you, this cat, the word is having three alphabets, C, A, T. When I utter the sound, that is signifier and the image you get. And finally, uh, if you see the physically cat, that is the signifier. So, it's not only animal, for everything it is like that. You know, if I say a crow or if I say a table or if I say a chair, you have this combination of uh, cyan and signifier and signifier. So, in the uh, following slides, you know, I have uh, given you uh, what Sashur says regarding the uh, language and what are the uh, properties of language or characteristics of language where he tries to discuss more on the arbitrariness of language or relational relationality and difference of language so this we will discuss when we come to discuss the essay that is prescribed for your study the object of um, study okay the object of study by Sashu. there we will uh, before i start the essay i will uh, further expand this uh, um, you know Sajur's ideas of uh, language and its characteristics and then shift to uh, that essay uh, i will be uh, texting you uh, this uh, essay the object of study which you can um, make a copy if possible because uh, the situations outside are not uh, um, good uh, yet if it is easier for you you can just try to um, get a copy of that or 
um, when I am teaching, you can just look. Uh, uh, no, when you listen to my uh, this lecture, recorded lecture, you better keep the text of that uh, object of study in front of you and try to go through that. Okay. Uh, so have a nice time. Uh, stay home. Stay safe. Take care.